Jackson, Calvin Davis and Mika Whaitiri, tēnā koutou katoa. Three ministers at the table, aren't I lucky? Hoi anō, Willie, tuatahi condolences to you and your whānau, mo te matingao tō māma me tō pāpa. Our hearts go out to the whānau. Mika, let's start with you. Why did we need, why did you need a road show, a national road show, to sell the budget for Māori? Um, so, obviously, it's important that we engage with our people, and that's what we did. A very successful tour, I must say, over 1,200 uh, of our people that we engaged with over the six-stop tour. But it gave us an opportunity to, to both drill down into yeah. the specific parts of the budget. How much did it cost? Um, look, that's something that uh, Willie probably could cover, because it was TPK that was hosting it. But, Willie, but there's the question. Not a lot. Not, not, not a lot. Not, not, uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 not a lot, but... Uh, you don't know it, right now? No, no but it's, uh, it was important. It's part of our tikanga in terms of te puni kōkiri, hmm. kānohi ki te kānohi. Our people should know about the budget, and uh, that's what we... It's not just about the puti, yeah, it's about, the, about information. Yeah, you should though. Um, well, if you should have put that question to us beforehand <laughs> and we would have come back to you with the number. Because so, it's, but... it's, no, it's not a big deal at all. What I will ask is, why six cities? Why six places? And some of them are way off. What, no Tairawhiti? Was Tairawhiti in there? Absolutely. No Waikato? Absolutely. Ta 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 one it's... place in Te Waipaunamu. Why those six So places? last year when we went around, we were in Christchurch. This year we were in Dunedin. Mm. We were, uh, were in Napier last year. This year in Gisborne. So we're trying to uh, go to the places that we hadn't been last year. But there's always a... There's a saying in politics, when you're repeating your message for the thousandth time, someone's hearing it for the first time. And there are a lot of people who hadn't, hadn't heard the details about the Māori Health Authority. They mm. didn't know about the, the pūtia that Mecca got for, for Māori data. They, you know, they wanted to know about the education, the yeah. corrections, the uh, uh, They didn't really stuff. go to Māori communities like Ruatahuna, the places out in Waikato, people who can't travel to these six places that you went actually, to. Actually, we did. We went to Ngāti Hoa in Morrinsville. Um, we, we, we did to and like Calvin said, we're trying to spread it around to regions that we haven't done previous year. And look, overwhelmingly, people were very, very supportive of what was achieved in we, budget. We even went into a shearing shed and had a hui with Māori farmers. Willie, you seem happy about that. Oh, absolutely, because uh, I think it was... We didn't just go to a breakfast. We went out and met with our people everywhere, and our people came in. They appreciate it, and they deserve it. And so this is only our second year doing it, and it was such a success, we'll probably do it again next year because, you know, it's about time our people... Um, you know, look, we've been, we've been underfunded and under-resourced for years and years and years, so asking how much it, uh, it costs is ridiculous because we've been so underfunded and we've so contributed to this nation that our people deserve uh, for us to go out there, meet with them uh, and all around the motu. What did you ask for but missed out on for Māori in this budget? I know $1.2 billion is a lot of money but what did you miss out on? Yeah, so back to back billion dollar budgets and in fact over the last three years it's been um, $3 billion What did we total. miss out on though? Well we don't go into those conversations because we want to put the put um, you know effort into trying to get things that we missed out on next year um, but look $3 billion over three budgets uh, is a fantastic result for our people. When you consider that the National Māori Party in 2017 got $120 million, we thought that was great targeted uh, funding, but we've got a billion dollars. <laughs> Based on the total Māori population, the estimate right now is 875, which makes us, what, 17% of the total 18%, population? 18%. 18%. So shouldn't we be getting 18%? Well, see, it sounds like John Tomahedi and Rawiri Waititi have been well, talking to you. They're close to the number to you. They, 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 they clearly had Jackson. tricked you and Simon over there. <laughs> no, because, no, no, no. But, no, no, hey, no, because you're talking... No, I've got to say this nicely. You're talking rubbish, OK? <laughs> no, you're talking, no, you are, because Māori providers are only 5%. Mm. So so, so you're, what you're thinking was... You're thinking... You're, you're thinking what that... about Māori people? No, well, because Māori people get it through the main spend. So what we're talking about is $1.2 in terms of targeted funding, which goes out to about the 5% of, of Māori who are out there. 88% of our people use mainstream. We get them all with the other spend, so we have two types of strategies. Mm. So you've got to stop believing the Māori party hype and nonsense where they start saying, oh, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, 800,000 Māori. But and they, they, no, it's, no, 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 it's rubbish. Point, because shouldn't it's we a be getting point. what... what it's an equitable state. Yeah, no, but, but, an we're, equitable no, but state? what we're getting is 10 to 15 times more than we ever got. 
And so, so that's why Calvin said 100, uh, 120 million. We're getting 10 to 15 times more, 3 billion in the last three years. So much more. Is it equitable? Is it enough? No. But we don't want to break the country. We're on, we're on a bit of a journey here. Just like Mahuta and O'Regan, they took 170 million, they could have taken 15 billion. But we are Aroha people, and we'll, we'll work with the people, and we'll run two strategies. Not everyone uh, goes to Kohangari or Kura Kaupapa. So we have to get all those Māori who are not involved in Māori strategies. And so 1.2 billion gets the 5 to 7 percent of Māori providers. We get the rest with the, with the main spend. So please stop that question. I never want to hear that question again. Well, I'm going to ask you next <laughs> okay. time, okay? Okay, well, I, need informed, fight today. I need informed I'm going to bring Mika into mm. the conversation. Let's see. This week you announced some um, good uh, funding around Māori Climate Action, yes, the Māori so Climate cool. Action uh, platform, as well as funding for that. Why do we need... Um, you know, a Māori climate action plan for Māori. Aren't Māori already leaders in that area? So here's the deal. Um, adverse weather events, um, ordinary, uh, particularly coastal uh, communities, of which I come from in the Tairawhiti, uh, means that a lot of our uh, communities are exposed. Um, they've come to the government, the government's listened, and we've put Pūtea in this year's budget to work alongside our communities, our Māori hapū communities, Northland and his, in Calvin's areas, Tairawhiti, my area, and South and South Island. So this Pūtea of 35 million plus 30 million is a commitment to working with our Māori communities around preparing ourselves for resilience and, in our communities. And to enhance what Māori are already doing. OK, so why is Te Taumata, the Māori trade group, uh, calling for a hui with you and James Shaw about this? They're upset about the removal of the exotic trees from the trade emissions trading scheme, which they say will impact heavily and be a missed opportunity of billions of dollars. How do you answer that? Yeah. Well, can I say that, you know, $1.2 billion, there's still going to be people out there that said, oh, it's not enough here, we, our group should have got this, our group should have got this that, and the media that. This isn't about that, though. We'll go back people. to Mecca. Yeah, the sure. question really is, these people, Māori trade group, Te Taumata, are saying that this is actually going to impact quite heavily on what is potential on Māori land. And, and it strips away Māori landowner rights. And this government has been actively engaging with forest owners, Northland, Tairawhiti, Te Arua. Was there enough this consultation? Is one of many. With Māori? Well, we've got a real urgent climate change challenge yeah. on us and we want to make sure, and this government has been actively engaging, like you said, we'll meet with these groups, as we've met with all other iwi groups, around ensuring that I iwi's rights and interests around preparedness and access for funding through this government is actually uh, being met. And, and, it's, and it's, not, and it's not over yet. We were with the Minister and with James the other mm. day. It's not over. We're meeting with Māori groups this week and it's an argument about exotic and, and natives. We, we get it. Um, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk with them about it. It's far from over. We understand the arguments. There's some fair arguments there. Yeah. Just give us some time. We can't, we can't do everything. Just remember, we're called racist and separatist by Simon's mates and the ACT Party and, uh, all right, and all right. National, and we're called racist and we're called too slow and dragging the chain by the Māori Party. So we're somewhere in the middle. You are stuck in the middle. Speaking of being stuck in the middle, Willie, where's the uh, UN un UNDRIP, for those who don't understand, but where's the plan for the UNDRIP? Well, it's a good question. I just got I just got the draft yesterday from our team working on it. Well, and, can you tell us and, about it? What's well, in nothing. It? Uh, but, you haven't uh, read it. I've got to have, 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 have a read, and uh, the nation, will, you know, will will see what sort of invites well, we get coming forward. It is a serious and Absol sensitive Absolutely. audit, really about co-governance. You know, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misconception about what co-governance is. Some assume that it's co-government. How would you explain it? Like simply, how well, do you well, well, it's about it? it's about opportunity. It's about partnering up. It's about two two groups working together in terms of accountability and going forward together. It's about a, it's about a partnership, uh, look, a and uh, Calvin uh, might want to... I think we've got to demystify it for people because there's a, the belief out there in, in mainstream New Zealand that they're going to lose something if Māori, um, if something changes for Māori mm -hmm. for the benefit, uh, for, you know, in the positive. It, it's not about anybody, it's not, you know, it's not a zero-sum game, it's about all of New Zealand actually working together to improve Aotearoa Aotearoa for all of us. Well, is it delayed because, you know, it's become too politically risky for the government to the, the, de the election? You're talking about the yeah. declaration? The declaration, no, it's, it's the not plan delayed. The no, they're working, they're working well, and I have to have a read of it over the next few days, then submit it to Cabinet. And, uh, you know, we've gone further with it than any other party. The National Party and Māori Party put it on hold for about five years. So I think it can be good for the nation, and there's nothing to be scared of. Co-governance is only a small part of the declaration plan. How similar is it to the He Pua Pua report? Uh, there are points from He Pua Pua in it, but there's a lot of new things in it. He Pua 
before, it was just a policy uh, um, document that the other side keep using all the time. But we also, also got to remember that co-governance is not a new thing. It came no. in under the national government, the yeah. uh, Waikato River uh, Authority. And I was, talking, yeah, to Tuku, I was yeah. talking to Tuku Morgan yesterday. He said in the 10 years that they've been going, not once has that group that he's been working with had to go to a vote on anything. They've always worked by consensus and they've always got results. So it's not about combating uh, sides, combating each other. It's about working together mm. for the benefit of There's everyone. nothing to be scared of, Ordinary. It's just not about the lightning in the sky and the mountains and the sea. It can be about everyday things. You know, when you have You such... don't have to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, people will try to get all romantic about it. But actually, you can apply a co-governance model in, in a kura. You know, the ACT Party put it in the Auckland Statutory Board. You know, because we have such huge disparities, why wouldn't you run it in an everyday process in employment or on the local board, you know, in terms of the economic, uh, an economic board and try and bring everyone together. It's not about a takeover, it's about working together. Alright, Calvin Davis, I want to talk to you about the announcement you made uh, for extra funding, a $23 million package for Oranga Tamariki. For Oranga Tamariki to become the enabler, to enable iwi hapu whanau to lead and deliver better outcomes for rangatahi and whanau, that's what it said. Why are you throwing more money at Oranga Tamariki when the system, no. when it's a failing, with all the failings that have been ha happening? No, well, this is the thing. That money is not going to Oranga Tamariki. It's going to communities because we want communities, uh, we want them to have the, um, the mana, the decision-making and the resources. Now, this $23 million is going to the communities to start the process of how they're actually going to, uh, you know, look after the needs of the children and the whanau in their communities. I was in Hamilton yesterday having this very conversation with about 80 different providers and saying, I want you guys to, to get together and think about how are you going to look after the needs of the whānau and children in your area. And this pūtia is there to, to help support them. So to, those to are your that. expectations of them for this pūtia, right? Uh, what my, happens if they don't deliver on those expectations? Those providers? The, uh, those providers no, receiving public funds. What if they don't? deliver what this, you're hoping they will. This is what Māori have been asking for. Mm -hmm. Communities, whānau, hapu and iwi know how to look after their children, know how to look after the, the whānau. We're just, uh, Oranga Tamariki are becoming the enablers of that to happen and that's why we're having these conversations with communities. And they're up for the challenge. Uh, so there's going to be a, a hui, uh, in fact, that's why I was having the conversation yesterday with Tuku. Tuku put up his hand, uh, Waikato Tainui are going to coordinate the hui with all those providers and say, how are we going to do it? The Minister is giving us a once-in-a-lifetime chance to do things for ourselves. How are we going to do it working together? All right. We're running out of time here, but I do want to get through a couple more kaupapa. Mika Whaiteri, Party Māori are calling for an iwi bank. What do you reckon about that? Oh, look, they've been calling. It's not new. There's been calls years ago, if you remember back in the mana days, uh, and, and, it, and it didn't uh, get off the ground. Look, what we're focusing here in this government is recognising the economic potential around Māori owner assets, and we're investing in them. This is what's in Budget 2022. So you don't think it's a good idea? No, I'm just thinking that there's a lot of issues that I know our people are f focusing on, and Budget 2022 recognises it um, in the data space, um, in the Māori agribusiness space, um, and also in the employment and procurement space, we are helping Māori small businesses really thrive in this, um, you know, coming out of COVID and really addressing our economic recovery through the Māori lens, and I'm really proud of what we're doing in that space. Well, you saw our poll on Tauranga, you know, there's quite a bit of um, kōrero there, but the thing is, they're not voting for Labour. What's going wrong? Well, they, well, they never have. So we're not we're not at all surprised by by that that poll. What we do know is we've got an outstanding candidate down there. Mm. Jan Tineti uh, serves us proudly. I work with her actually on on the Manawahine claim, and so it's terrific working with her. And no surprises. And they've probably got a few more percentages because uh, Jan had COVID this week. So uh, you know, so well, that's going to boost the race. <laughs> okay, so, so we drop, we, drop, we drop behind a little bit, but <laughs> no surprise. And we got as I said, we've got a fabulous candidate down there. Kapai Calvin Davis says the Minister of Te Arawhiti. Um, Māori Crown Relations. You guys are handling Matariki this year. Thank you very much for uh, making that official, uh, for, for pushing that through. But the question is, 60 applications got approved. Are you gonna, have you been invited to any of the kaupapa being uh, uh, howling all in Matariki? Of them. All, all of them. them. <laughs> so which one are you going to pick? Well, look, OK, so uh, the, the main event on the 24th, and then I'm coming up to Te Atatū because the, uh, Te Atatū Marae always have a Matariki event uh, uh, that's the Saturday morning, then I'm going to try and get up north uh, to the rest of the electorate and, and see what's going on up there. But uh, Te Arafiti have been able to 
uh, put out Putia to support all the events that are going on so that all the regions can celebrate Matariki uh, in their own way across the nation. Yeah. This is about Aotearoa. It's not about just Māori. It's mm. about us as a nation. Yeah. Well, Lee, what are you doing for Matariki? Well, I'm like him. I've got, we've got invitations everywhere. But I, I, th I think it's wonderful. And again, you should thank the Māori caucus and the Māori ministers for driving us. I will us. thank Rangi Mata <laughs> for the idea. We love him too. <laughs> Absolutely. He's our leader on this, no doubt about it. Absolutely. But it takes a brave and courageous government to take these sort of things up. So thank us for driving it and thank our Prime Minister and our Pākehā colleagues who've embraced it too. And National have gone along with it because they can see all the public quite like this. I will thank you for your time this morning. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you, thank, you. thank you very Good much for clear. extending, uh, for, for taking up our offer. It's been a while, Willie. Yeah. Well, and you're, you're going well. You're going thank well. You very well We're proud of you. <laughs> Tarua ke te iwi up next. What did our panel think of that court at all? Plus, is National overreacting over China in the Pacific? Jerry Brownlee joins us live. Imagine Paris in the 20s. You're in love with a fantasy. If I was to tell you that I spent last night with Ernest Hemingway and Scott Fitzgerald, what would you say? I'd be thinking brain tumor. Midnight in Paris, tonight on 3 and 3 now. It's the final days of Torpedo 7's Queen's Birthday Sale. Get up to 30% off selected bikes, 40% off a huge range of Torpedo 7 branded jackets and Summit Merino thermals, and 30% off Torpedo 7 branded snow goggles and helmets. Hurry, ends Tuesday.